Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Today, one of the nation's most punishing and restrictive abortion bans went into effect in the third largest state in the union. In the state of Florida, it is now a felony to, quote, perform or actively participate in an abortion after six weeks gestation. That is just two weeks after a missed period. It's before many, many women even know that they are pregnant. The ban does, at least statutorily, provide exceptions for rape, incest, human trafficking, up to 15 weeks of pregnancy, and to save a woman's life or to prevent, quote, substantial and irreversible physical impairment. But what we have learned from those exceptions in other states and what providers in Florida say is that they don't work, that there will be very serious consequences. A Florida doctor telling NBC News, quote, it's going to cause delays in care that are going to cost women significant health hazards or risks. So as of today, 17 states ban all or most abortions, including the entire South, that block there, from Texas to Florida. Three more states ban the procedure after 12 or 15 weeks. One of those three, Arizona, recently upheld a Civil War era law banning nearly all abortions. Today, just two Republicans in the entire state Senate joined all Democrats in the state Senate to repeal the 1864 law. It's still expected to go into effect for a limited period of time over the summer before reverting back to that 15-week ban. In all, in this country in 2024, as we head towards this election, one in three women of reproductive age lives in a state with an abortion ban. That's a reality in America. And the man responsible, who has a 50-50 chance of getting back in the White House next year, believes he did the country a great service. It was... Always the plan from the great legal experts of this country and even the world. They wanted to get abortion out of the federal government. Everybody wanted that. That was uniform. So what's happened is now the states decide, and they're going to votes in different states, and it's been an amazing process. But basically, the states decide on abortion, and people are absolutely thrilled with the way that's going on. <laughs> You can keep saying that, but it's not going to make it true. The majority of this country is not thrilled with what Donald Trump did to reproductive rights, not thrilled with women having to bleed out in parking lots before they can get into hospitals, being medevaced out of hospitals in states like Idaho. They're not thrilled with that. And he has not been getting anywhere near the level of blame that he deserves. Today, in Florida, Vice President Kamala Harris pointedly gave Trump full credit for the abortion bans. At the stroke of midnight, another Trump abortion ban went into effect here in Florida. As of this morning, four million women in this state woke up with fewer reproductive freedoms than they had last night. This is the new reality under a Trump abortion ban. In a statement, President Biden was even clearer, saying in part, quote, there is one person responsible for this nightmare, Donald Trump. And in politics, uh, people exaggerate all the time. But on this, it's just true. There is no question about it. Donald Trump is the man responsible for the abortion ban. He's responsible for the bans in Florida and in Arizona and 18 other states. He's responsible for every woman that has to suffer awaiting care they desperately need, who's turned away in all the states restricting the rights and threatening the lives of millions of Americans. Eliminating the federal right to an abortion was Donald Trump's plan from the very beginning. He ran for president the first time on appointing Supreme Court justices that would overturn Roe v. Wade. In your selection as president, uh, what criteria would you use to yeah. pick somebody? Pro-life. Pro-life. Uh, they'll be pro-life, and we'll see what about overturning, but they will be, we will appoint, I will appoint judges that will be pro-life. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe v. Wade? Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. Again, there was lots of stuff that Donald Trump was real hazy about, real foggy about. There was a lot of misdirection even now this year. There wasn't on this issue. It was clear as day. He said it over and over. 
In fact, he even released a list of the anti-abortion, anti-road judges he would choose from. The people on that list were chosen by conservative groups, including the Federalist Society and the Heritage Foundation. Now, Donald Trump clearly had literally no idea who they were, just that they fulfilled the requirements of the anti-abortion far right. So with the judges, they were saying, well, what happens if he appoints the wrong judges? And what we did, and I, I just have it, um, we just took a Tell list names, of David. judges. And yeah. uh, I thought what I would do is put this forward, and this would be the list that I would either choose from or pick people very close in terms of the spirit and the meaning of what they represent. And I uh, came up with a list. Uh, the Federalist Society was very much involved. Uh, various people were involved. It's gotten very good reviews. It's gotten great from its reviews. immediate release. It's gotten and great reviews. The people that have seen it have given yeah. it. So if you want, I will. Uh, yeah. I will do it now. If you'd like yeah, me just to read the, them, I, think I can read them. I, I don't. I hope your people aren't going to fall asleep as I read them. He read the list of names. I mean, this was a, again. This was a huge issue. Remember, people thought Trump maybe wasn't a stalwart conservative. He had skepticism from evangelicals. So the idea was just black and white. Like you're getting the judges and the justices that will overturn Roe. He continued to add to the list, and eventually, again, maybe the only promise the man has kept in his life, I honestly mean that, he did what he said. He chose three names from the list. They were all on the list. Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett. Now, at their confirmation hearings, all three Trump appointees who were on the list, who he said would overturn Roe, were coy when asked about how they would rule on abortion rights, describing Roe as settled law. Roe versus Wade decided in 1973 as a president of the United States Supreme Court. It has been reaffirmed. I understand the importance of the precedent set forth in Roe v. Wade. I don't have any agenda. I have no agenda to try to overrule Casey. Um, I have an agenda to stick to the rule of law and decide cases as they come. <laughs> Amy Coney Barrett got up there under oath in front of him and was like, I have no agenda to overturn Roe. Sure, right, of course. Of course, Donald Trump's aims and his intentions in nominating the three justices were always clear. Under my administration, we will always defend the very first right in the Declaration of Independence, and that is the right to life. A tremendous record including two great new Supreme Court justices, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. They'll be making tremendous and important decisions on abortion. The president also is opposed to Roe v. Wade. That's on the ballot as well in the court, in the court. And so that's also at stake right now. And so the election is all You don't know it's begun. on the ballot. I, Why is it on the ballot? Because, because Why is it on the ballot? It's not on the ballot. It's on the ballot in the I court. I don't think so. In the court. Well, There's nothing happening there. There's nothing happening there. Donald Trump, 2020. Nothing happening there. The guy who told us all along, like, you're getting Roe v. Wade overturned. We're getting anti-abortion justices. When he gets it all there, I mean, what are you talking about? There's nothing happening. And then in the June of 2022, Donald Trump's six-year-long plot succeeded. His three justices, who he had vetted, who were on the list, who he guaranteed would overturn Roe v. Wade, overturn Roe v. Wade, eliminating the right to an abortion. He brags about it now. I want to thank the Supreme Court justices for having the courage, uh, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, Amy Coney Barrett, for the wisdom and the courage to do this. But Donald Trump deserves all the credit. He is the ultimate cause, the man responsible for millions of American women living under dangerous, draconian abortion bans. And if he's elected again, it will only get worse.